Spirit. And that's why we gather together. Praise the Lord for that. So have you already experienced showers of blessings today? Yes, I heard a few amens. Praise the Lord, it rained last night. Isn't that wonderful? We should all have smiles on our faces. You wake up, you smell the air. It's a whole different air, isn't it? So God wants to shower us this morning with his blessings. So this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are rejoicing with you, Art. Mm -hmm. You and Liz, these flowers. These are beautiful flowers. You are praising God for the blessings and the love that you have shared together with Liz. For how many? I don't know. Is this an anniversary thing? Yes. How many years? Uh, I'll have to do the math. <gasps> I put him on the spot. Is Liz here? Uh, she's in Cabo San Lucas. Oh, she. Wow, wow. Cabo. She is, <laughs> she is celebrating for art there. He does not know how many years of marriage. So. <laughs> She was smart, wasn't she? <laughs> you know, I just have to say this about Liz. I knew her before he did. Did you know that? I went to school with her on Guam. We traveled in the same yellow bus from one end of the island of Guam all the way to the other end, Windward Hills Academy. So I was delighted. It's a small world, and we're happy for Liz that she's in where she is. <laughs> Church family, there's so many announcements in, in our bulletin, but I just want to draw your attention to one uh, dining with a doc. Now, I know we are pretty much full for this Tuesday. Remember, it's the first Tuesday of every month, and I want to encourage you, if you want to hear some phenomenal lifestyle uh, presentations from some of our top physicians in this area, you want to come. Besides, you get a fantastic meal completely plant-based meal for $15. So we will have it starting next Tuesday, an app on our website called Square One where you can actually sign up and pay via your card if that's how you'd like to do it. But if you wanna know more about it, see me at the, at the ministry booth today. But please keep that ministry in your prayers. It has just been a fantastic uh, time so far and this week, uh, next Tuesday is George Chin from Lodi who will be speaking with us. All right, we have something so exciting happening tonight. Do any of you kids know what that is? What, what is it? Um, Heroes Unmasked, is that what you were saying? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. And it's at 5 o'clock tonight in the Fellowship Hall because we don't need to trick or treat. We just have full treats that are amazing. And it is going to be Bible Heroes this Saturday night in the Fellowship Hall for all of you young families. I can't wait to be there. I'm considering myself a young family. Just saying. Okay, Marit, something exciting is happening in the service today. Tell us about that. I would like to invite Doris Iki and Andreas Grelman to come up here with me. Both Doris and Andreas are going to be baptized today, and that is such a highlight in our church life and in our church family. Are you taller than I am? No, not quite. No, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Almost there. Almost. Okay, he almost is. Hi, Doris. Doris came here from Ghana a few years ago, Nigeria, excuse me, Nigeria, and she came here and when she walked into the Carmichael Church, she just felt so at home, and this was, became her family. In Nigeria, she grew up in a Christian family, and when she came to the Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Carmichael, she said, I want to belong. I want to I believe what they believe. Doris, we are so excited that you have made that decision. You have studied with Lori Jackson faithfully, and not only do you love the church family here, but you have also come to love the things that we believe and the God that we serve. And that is very, very exciting. So I'm just thrilled to be here with you this morning. I know that you brought some family members. They are all sitting over there. Okay, those of you who are here specifically for Doris, can you please stand? Look at that beautiful family. Beautiful. So exciting. Yeah. 
Do you know that I knew this guy when he was six pounds and I don't know how many ounces? <laughs> <laughs> I did. And I was holding you and we were sitting in that Sabbath school and now I'm standing here with you and it is just so, it's such an honor and a privilege. Andreas, you and I have studied together and I have come to find out that you love God with all your heart and you would like to serve him the rest of your life. So because of that decision, I can today baptize you and Doris. And we are thinking that this is really going to happen. It's not raining, so we are excited about that. And I would like to propose a motion that we accept those two young, two young people, young person, as members of the Carmichael Church. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? second. All in favor, please say aye. Thank you. Did you hear that? Andreas, I know that you have some special people here too, right? And they are sitting right over there. Could you guys stand, all of those who are here for Andreas? And then there are teachers and classmates. See, there's your first class, first grade teacher. On behalf of Andreas's mom, Audra, I would like the church family to thank you for all that you have done to bring this child along so that today we are standing here. It truly takes a village, yes, it or it takes a church. And all of you, you have welcomed Doris. You have made her feel like she was your own. You have done the same with Andreas, and we thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I have a book for you, and your baptism certificate. I have one for you, and I'll see you in the baptistry, okay? Thank you. That is the highlight of worship, seeing two people dedicating their hearts to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, Pastor Caleb, tell us what's going on. I know many of you have this book, um, and many of you are not in it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's our church directory, or else um, I believe Andreas uh, was just born when that photo was taken. Uh, so it'll be exciting to, to get a new photo of him uh, now that he's matured uh, quite a bit since then. So we're going to start uh, taking pictures for our new photo directory, November 15th. Um, it's going to be for four weeks, November 15th through December 6th. And instead of going through a different company, we're going to be doing everything in-house. Uh, so what that means is that instead of having different options for things to purchase, we're just going to give you the photo and we hope that you're able to use it in postcards or um, a family, you know, those little trinket things they send out at Christmas time. Uh, I can't keep, with, keep up with those trendy young families. I don't know. You guys are doing great stuff. But uh, we're going to be, so the big point today is today we're going to be opening up registrations for different time slots. So instead of having everybody just come and line up, uh, we really thought it would be better to have people register for time slots, and then you can just come then and get it taken care of. Uh, so if you guys have a smartphone uh, or anything like that, you can pull it out now and go to the church website. It's carmsda.org. Or there's an announcement here. Uh, you can also scan the QR code there. Or if neither of those things make sense to you, uh, there are going to be people in the back after the church service that can also sign you up. Uh, we're going to be holding iPads, right. or for those who don't like Apple, we also have a non-Apple uh, pad device for you to use. Um, yes, Alex, we, got, we, we thought of you. We're very inclusive here at the Carmichael Church. Right. And uh, so we'd love to take your, or, take your uh, time slot. If you could just go on there, you're going to click on make a photo announcement, uh, choose the date of those four dates you want, and then just choose a time, enter your information, then you'll be sent a confirmation email immediately, and you'll get a text message reminder an hour before it's going to happen. Okay, so we're really excited about this, uh, and please, as many as you can do it, please take that, uh, take that opportunity. Um, you'll get a free photo, and it'll enable us to learn names, okay? So that way you, you know Andreas, and you can say hi to him. You can go home and like, oh, I need to remember that guy's name. You'll get it. You'll get it. All right. Yes. Thank you. Well, just to stay here for a second, sure. because is Kathy Westcott here? 
Okay, she is not here. So she was going to do the announcement about something else that we have going on for our college kids because we want to take care of our own college kids. Tell us a little bit about it, Caleb, really short. Yeah. So also this week we're taking sign-ups for people that want to send an encouragement box to our college students. Um, it's going to be finals are coming up, and we just like to send them a box letting them know that their church family cares about them, loves them, and is praying for them during this time. So if you want to come over, uh, Benji and myself, we're going to be in uh, the different ministry booths back there. I'm going to be on the right. He's going to be on the left. Um, and whichever one of us like, you like better, go to that one. I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, if, you, if you want photo directory stuff, come to me for other stuff uh, having to do with taking somebody and buying stuff for them, go to him. It's going to be a, a short list. Uh, we're going to be providing a shirt. We're going to be providing uh, some other stuff from the church. And then we're asking you to pick up just some hot drink packets for them, uh, maybe possibly make some cookies if you're willing to do that as well. And, uh, and there's one other thing. Oh, and just a little gift, um, something in the $5 range, just something that isn't useful um, but it's fun. Uh, so if you're willing to do that, we'd love to just let our kids know that we're supporting them during this time. Go out, new member welcome booth. I like it. Thank you so much, Caleb. That's a great opportunity for us to support our kids. We want them to know we care about them year round if they're in town or out of town, out of state. Amen? Great opportunity. Perry, come share with us. Ministry celebration. Wow, what do I need to say about ministry? You've heard one, two, three, four, five, five different ministries in the last three minutes. But there's another ministry I want to just ask your help with, too, and that's with community services. Community services needs cans of food, not jars, canned, canned beans, canned peas, uh, tomato sauce, whatever comes in a can. Their can supply is getting really low. Uh, I heard this morning that they have lots of fresh fruits, they have lots of fresh vegetables, but remember those, those cans. We have the little red wagon out in the foyer every Sabbath morning, so remember that. But you know, tomorrow, today I'm supposed to talk about budget. Without our giving to church budget, we could not do a lot of the projects that we do. Yes, so true. Because the money would have to come from someplace else to supplement the budget. If we can keep, as members, can keep that budget going, then we have other funds that support this other stuff that we all enjoy so much. So continue to, to be blessed by giving to our local church budget. Amen. Thank you, Perry. I really appreciate the, that you mentioned about the foods, how we need more canned foods. I think you need to know, church family, that... Yes, we serve our community with these canned goods, but we also serve our church members who need some help with food on a week-to-week -week basis. So God greatly appreciates all that you do to make a difference in that way. You know, Connect Card. We, we talk about this every Sabbath. It's in your bulletin. I just want you to go ahead and take a look at it right now because this connect card really does connect us together we need to know are you visiting would you like to be a member if you would like to be a member or maybe you have been a member would you like to know how you can best serve in this church and in this community please let us know if you have prayer requests maybe you don't even want to sign your name but you want us as a pastoral staff to pray we do pour our hearts before God in all that you're on all your prayer requests. I just want you to truly know that. It makes a difference. We need each other as a church family. Amen? We are here for each other in the good and not so good times. And all of us know that in our life, in our journey, we are going to go through most difficult, uncertain times. A while back in our service, I had asked Karen Yao, as a young mother, to come forward and share with us what was taking place with her. So I've asked her to come up again this morning because a procedure is being done in just less than two weeks. As you may know, Karen had metastatic, has metastatic cancer. And uh, she is a mother of two beautiful boys 
and wonderful Hans, who's a Southwest pilot. But Karen, share with your church family who absolutely adore you. You are the fearless adventure leader that we just are so proud of and so lean on. Tell us what's taking place in your life right now. So in um, February, they um, were able to um, use high dose radiation to um, get rid of the tumor that was in my brain. Um, about a month ago, I had my routine um, MRI and PET scan that I get every three months now. And um, the tumor has um, started growing back in my head again. So on November 10th, I will um, go and have the gamma knife radiation surgery again. Um, I also have, um, they found a um, spot on one of my bones as well. And right now we're just watching that, but um, in the mm, some mid-November sometime, I'll have another scan to see if that area is growing or not. Church, we need each other. Here we go, yeah. Keith. Church family, you know, Karen, Hans, and the boys have uh, blessed us nonstop, and you still do. And because you have come here and opened your arms to us, you've allowed us to have community with you. That's right. So, Karen, really the purpose this morning in worship is not just to pause, because what we share with you here is something that you know a lot of people have been sharing with you on a regular basis. Karen is here with her church family this morning, opening her life, current issue. We're going to have prayer here in just a moment, but we want to say publicly that we do believe that God hears. Amen. We do believe that God goes ahead of us That's right. in ways that sometimes we see and understand, and sometimes in ways we don't understand. That's right. But we have been asked to come together, Karen, and that's what we're going to do this morning pray for you That's right. and we want you to know that you have a family uh, yeah. who loves you and shares faith with you that's right the church family uh, while I pray up here if you wouldn't mind standing, standing. and if you Please. could extend a hand of blessing toward Karen this morning Heavenly Father you know everything that's going on in each of us this morning, you know most specifically what's going on inside Karen. We haven't come to you to inform you. We've come to you this morning specifically to publicly, before the universes, to declare our trust in you. Amen. And so we, uh, we with Karen, uh, submit her to your continuing care, your continuing intervention. You have asked us to request the best gifts. Yes. And so you being the Holy Father who knows only how to give the best and the purest of gifts, right. we come to you asking for another intervention. Mm. We thank you that you've already put in place the, the medical technology and the information and, and unlocking what has been mysteries to us in the past. And we thank you that you've already given that level of intervention. Exactly. But Lord, we ask for more. Amen. We ask for a healing. We ask for wholeness. And we ask that in this journey that Karen goes on uniquely in her own person, we ask that you would be so powerfully present. Amen. That step by step, Karen would know that you, her redeeming, healing, eternal God, that you are with her every step of the way. We surrender Karen and her family to your unique, eternal presence, trusting in you, your timing, your perfection, your holiness. So uh, take our faith, strong one moment, feeble the next. Yes. But in every situation, we are your sons, we are your daughters. In you, we lay our trust. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Please be seated.
Isn't it wonderful to know we serve a powerful and mighty God that's capable of healing and lifting us up? We're going to continue our service this morning with our opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress, hymn number 506, if you want to turn to your hymn. Take a, a moment to greet your neighbor, maybe someone you haven't seen yet, or said hello to yet on this beautiful Sabbath day. Immediately following the meet and greet, if you want to make your way out to the courtyard for our baptism.
join us out in the courtyard for our baptism for our visitors. There, if you want to stay here, there will be a video of the baptism on the screen. Doris, we have been looking forward to this day for a very long time. And I just asked her if she was nervous, and she's not. She's just excited. She's just thrilled. And you can see it in her face. I think Doris has the most beautiful smile ever. Um, it was Doris' request that Lori be here with us, because she is the one that has truly taken Doris under her wing, and not only studied with her, but also talked with her, guided her, be a friend. She was there when little Lori was born. All of them. <laughs> All of them. All the three. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Lori, yeah. to have us, have you here with us. Doris, because you love God, because you have said that you want to follow Him for the rest of your life, why don't you go hang on to my arm? Because of all those things, um, I can now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Doris, my dear friend, my new sister in Christ, I've picked out a text for you that I think is perfect for you because I think that your steps are definitely ordered by the Lord. Psalm 37 verses 23 through 24 says, The steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord, and He delights in her way. Though she fall, she shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds her with His hand. I want you to keep that with you forever, my friend. Andreas, we have a lot of people here. <laughs> we've studied, we've talked, I've seen you grow up, 
and I have seen God working in you. The other day we talked about the gifts and the talents that God has given you and you have an amazing creativity. And I'm hoping that when you get older, I can see this creativity work within you to bring other people to Christ. And I think that can happen, and I'm really excited. Andreas, because you have said that you want to commit your life to Jesus, do you still want to do that? Now, you've heard this, me say this before. You're still very young. This is the most important decision you can make. This is the cornerstone of your life. However you're going to go, this is the direction that you have chosen to go. And every other decision will be depending on this one. I'm glad. Still want to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. Andreas, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. a different text for you, one that I think is very appropriate for a teenager, because they think they know everything, right? <laughs> Trust in your Lord, buddy, with all your heart, and don't depend on what you think is the right thing. Seek His will in all you do, and He will show you the right way to go. Appropriate? That's a prayer. Father God, what an incredible day this is in the life of Doris and in the life of Andreas. Mm. We thank you so much what you have already done in their lives and we look forward to what else you are going to do. Thank you for the commitment that they have made. I pray that you will bless them. I pray that you will put your arms around them. I pray that you will hold the evil forces away. Thank you, Lord, for loving them and we are looking forward to see more of that in your name.
Good morning, Carmichael Church. Our scripture can be found in Psalm 91, verses 1 through 4. Psalms 91, verses 1 through 4. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. They say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress and my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and comfort. Dorothy, you mind coming back up here? Encore. Also, uh, Chris Cabrera, uh, Joe Kanjawe, all the deacons who are getting ordained, please come forward. <laughs> oh, Thanks, call. Brian. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel privileged to, uh, you know what? Let's to call these hand. guys friends. Um, and I just come here. am so happy for the, yeah, the right way here. that they've shown their heart. And guys, come on down. Here. Yeah, you want to come over here? Yeah. Take yeah, you're right here. Take one step. Just for the way they've shown their heart of service already. Um, it's been a blessing to see. Just, uh, over here. I had the privilege of marrying Brian off a few weeks ago. And, uh, and I, we got back and Chuck was busy in the kitchen. Nobody asked him to, didn't have a title, just already serving. And so I, I know for the deacons here, I'm happy to attest that they're ready to serve, and they've been serving this church already. It's a joy this morning to also uh, welcome a new elder, uh, a lady who has been a part, a mother of Israel here with this congregation for 30-plus years. And uh, many of you have been uh, beautifully greeted Sabbath morning and found not only a warm welcome but a prayerful welcome in Dorothy. And so, Dorothy, we are blessed that you have accepted the... Uh, recommendation of this church for you to join as one of our elders. You know, it's a very important thing, church family, to understand how does this come to be. Um, it comes really from you, the body. Dorothy's name was brought to the pastoral staff by a number of elders who simply said, you know, should there ever be an opening as in the elders position, we would recommend that you take a look at Dorothy. And uh, so, Dorothy, it's important to know that the body has turned to you. You gentlemen who have come here and served, some of you have been here a long time, Chris. Uh, some of you a little bit more recently. But what is really powerful is to see that in each of your lives you have engaged in such a manner that the body has given testimony that you have decided not simply to attend here, but that you have decided to serve here. And so it is a joy to set each of you aside with particular uh, anointing this morning. So at this time I'd like to invite uh, first of all the, uh, the elders that are present in the congregation. Would you please come forward as we have a prayer? So would all the elders of the congregation come forward? also like to invite a couple of our deacons, uh, Bob Stanley and Robert Jackson. Would you please come forward too and surround these gentlemen and as we get ready to lay our hands and this lady lay our hands of blessing and ordination on them. This morning I'll have a prayer of ordination on Dorothy and then Pastor Caleb will have the prayer of ordination on our deacons. All right, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you have asked us to extend the arm of ministry into the body by an act of recognition by an act of permission giving. We have seen your spirit move in a variety of ways. Specifically today we have seen your spirit move in Dorothy's life. And so we as a body we want to acknowledge your spirit hovering over her, your spirit enabling her, your spirit laying particular claim on her. Amen. So Lord this act this morning, this act of laying on hands is really an act of the body recognizing your claim and your call on her life. So we participate with you this morning 
in this empowering act of recognition. You have called Dorothy to serve. Now may she find the open embrace of this part of the body, welcoming her service, supporting her in service, and celebrating the reflection of your grace in her life. So we set her aside by support, by affirmation, by prayer, as an elder in this congregation. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Lord, I, I'm reminded of your disciples who, upon seeing you uh, clearing out the temple, were reminded of the scripture, zeal for the house of the Lord has consumed me. Yes. And God, I just thank you that as a body we've been able to see these men just have a zeal for your house, Amen. for your body, uh, to serve, to uphold, to strengthen. Father, I pray now that you would just bless their servant hearts. Amen. Uh, give them the strength to act when they see need. And Lord, I pray too um, that you would just bless them with Holy Spirit with a special anointing, uh, helping them to have eyes to see those around them as you see them, Jesus and his ears to hear how you're leading them to assist in the things you're doing in our lives, God. So we thank you, Lord, for them, and, and we just offer them to you. Uh, we anoint them this day, and we just say your will be done in their lives, God. Mm-hmm. Now we pray this and, and just seal this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 And all the congregation said, Amen. 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 God bless you.
At this time, boys and girls, it's time for your story, so go out and about. I was walking earlier and I saw some very lonely dollar bills way in the back. They need to be picked up and found a new home for them. Come on up, boys and girls. Yeah, if you want to, you can. Yeah, you got permission. Yeah. Good morning, boys and girls. Oh, man, you guys are sleeping. Hey, guess what? I am not Pastor Caleb. What? But Pastor Caleb, he couldn't come today. He's off somewhere else. But I think he has somebody else coming to tell you a special story. Who is this? You're right. You must, this is a girl from Israel, I can tell. Clearly. So I owed Pastor Caleb a favor. Um, don't want to go into it, but I lost a bet. And so I came here today in his place to share a story with you. Um, now I know many of you have heard uh, some stories about how I, have you heard a story about something I've done? Have you heard anything? What's the story you remember? Well, you killed Goliath. Right. That, that's my main claim to fame. That happened last year. And so I just want to let you know, I can't tell all those stories now, but I'm going to be there tonight to talk to you guys, okay? So I can answer any questions, anything there. So I'm looking forward to that at 5 o'clock. But I want to tell you something that happened earlier, uh, before I killed Goliath. Do, do any of you guys have chores? Do you have things you have to do? Stuff your, your parent, parents ask you to do? I did too. My chore was sitting up on a hill and watching over sheep. Okay, so I had to make sure they didn't run away, that nothing attacked them or anything like that. Now, this one time a bear was coming, and I could tell the sheep were in danger. Have you guys ever seen a bear? Yep. On Thursday. This guy knows what he's talking about. So... I, exactly a bear like that, except a little bigger. And I have my sling, which I, I, forgot, I forgot on the plane, I'm sorry. Um, but I have my sling, and I was, the bear was just behind a boulder. And I, so I was hiding over here, and the bear was over there. And I swung it, and then, bam, I hit the bear. And it ran off. And I was like, oh, good. Whew. I protected the sheep. But you know what? There was a time there where I thought, maybe my parents won't mind if I just don't do what they asked. You know, maybe I'll just pretend I forgot about the sheep, and I'll say, okay, bear, you can take one of them, 
you know, nobody's going nobody's gonna to miss Timmy. Uh, he's going to be okay. And, and I was tempted not, not to do the chores that my parents had asked me to. But I had decided that I was going to do whatever I could. I was going to do it to the glory of God. I was going to do my best and make sure that I was faithful in everything. So I was faithful in watching over those sheep. Even though sometimes it was boring, I had to listen to music and write songs. But, but I stayed focused, okay? And for you, I would encourage you today that as you stay focused in the little things, just in the chores you have and the things your parents ask you to do, as you're faithful in those things, God sees your heart and he'll trust you with the bigger things. If I hadn't done those things when I was little, I would have never been asked to kill Goliath because God would have known that I wouldn't have been counted on. But because I'd done those little things, he knew that he could trust me to take care of the big stuff. Okay? I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight. You can go back to your seats. We're going to continue worshiping with all hail the power of Jesus' name. mighty God, but we always also have a very personal God that wants to connect with us in powerful ways, in everyday ways, in quiet, private ways, when it's just us and Him in a relationship, spending time with Him. Join us as we sing an old favorite, He Touched Me. Shut 
as we sing sanctuary as we prepare to be his sanctuary and then join us in prayer led by Bill Penner.
Gracious Father in heaven, we come bowed before you this morning, thanking you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Dear Lord, we want you to touch each one of our lives today. We pray, dear Lord, that you'll be with those who are baptized into your sanctuary today. Pray that you'll be with Doris and Andrea. Bless them, dear Lord, as they begin their new life journey with you. And we pray, dear Lord, for also for Karen this morning. Lord, we know that you are all powerful. In our finite minds, we seem to know what is best for each one of us. But Lord, you are in heaven and we are your children. And I know, I know that you would want the best for each one of us. Guide and direct each one of us be with the past as he breaks the bread of life to us this morning. May each one of us, dear Lord, rededicate our lives to you. Walk a closer walk with you this coming week. Pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Carmichael, are you blessed? Yes. Bill, I appreciated so much of your prayer and the recognition that what happened this day is that two people were baptized into the heart of God. It is the heart of God, it is in the heart of God that we find our sanctuary. And uh, I, it is my prayer that in just a few moments that I'll be able to just remind each of us that God intends in the blood of Christ's sacrifice and in the resurrection power to reaffirm that we are safe now and that we are safe in Jesus Christ forever. A couple weeks ago, I shared a story with you about Wes Moore. I know that not all of you were here, so I'm just going to recap it really quickly. I picked up a book this summer entitled The Other Wes Moore. And the more that I've read into the book, the, I've become increasingly fascinated with this man's story. Galen, I'm jumping ahead. We're at slide two. Uh, the other Wes Moore. This is him. Sharp looking guy, isn't he? he, he you know, his, his biography is absolutely amazing. He worked with Condoleezza Rice in the White House. In December of 2000, the Baltimore Sun announced that he had received the Rhodes Scholarship, wrote a piece about his life. The article talked about his childhood and described some of the difficulties that he had encountered while growing up. In that same Baltimore Sun newspaper article, it shared the story of the other Wes Moore, also growing up in Baltimore, of the same age. It tells the story of the other Wes Moore that he was arrested and charged with the fatal shooting of a police officer on February 7 of the year 2000. That Wes Moore is still serving a life sentence. Now here's the line that caught my attention. The biggest gap we have in our society isn't necessarily the education gap or the technology gap, but the expectation gap. Wow. How do we help people think differently about their lives? And how do we think differently about the lives of others? This the other Westmore says, is the key hurdle we've got to get over. 
I'd like to suggest to you this morning in a few moments that this is not merely the statement of one life, but that this perhaps is one of the goals that God, the eternal God, has for all of us. How do we help people think differently about their lives, and how do we start thinking differently about the other lives around us? I really believe it simply calls for us to dwell in the presence of God. If you have your Bibles, let's just open it again and review that verse that Dorothy read for us earlier in Psalm chapter 91. Listen to these words. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. You know, parents, when you let your kids go out on an outing, there is that time between your car and when they return to your car that you wonder that could they get separated from you. I think that's the fear of most parents. And so because that, that possibility might surface, many of you have gone through the ritual of basically before you separate from your kids, you want to know, do you know where you live? You know, do you know your address? Do you have mom or dad's cell phone number memorized do you know your name <laughs> and of course do you have your lunch these basic elements church family are the three basic elements I want us all to walk away with today do you know your address no big question here no big guessing it is the dwelling place of God he who dwells what does it say did you happen to recognize that? He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. When you leave church today, when you go out into the brand new week ahead of you, I pray that you will know your address. Do you know your name? I hope you know this morning that you are a son, that you are a daughter of the eternal God. You all have your lunch? I hope so. The lunch is this sustaining presence that feeds us moment by moment that we are, we are the center focus of the heart and the mind of God. For years we have held in our Seventh-day Adventist faith community a teaching of Jesus as high priest. At times we've talked more about the times and the dates and I think these have been valuable discussions. But today I want to focus on the role of Jesus and the identity I believe he desires to impart, especially important to people living in an increasingly violent and times desperate world. Seeing how God has moved in the past, we gain even more clearly, we, ev we receive even more greatly a clarity as to the divine presence now and in the future. When God led Israel from Egypt, he instructed Moses to have a tent, a tabernacle, a mobile sanctuary built, and to have the entire camp of Israel set their tents around the Lord's tent. This picture, it, it, it was, you know, we, we see it as, as just a little graphic, but can you imagine every morning, if you are a part of Israel, when you would wake up in the morning, you would, maybe dad got up first, or maybe it was mom, somebody got up first, and they would reach down, and they would pull open the tent flap. And what would be the first thing they would see? They would see the presence of God. You see, God told Moses, build a tent in the middle of the encampment because I want it to be physically, visibly present. I want to be their God, and I want them to be my people. The core teaching, I want to suggest to you this morning, the core teaching of the sanctuary was never to be judgment. It was forever to be a declaration of God saying, I am with my people. I want to be visibly present. I want to be physically available. 
Every morning, every evening, the, t- the tabernacle was right there. The 12 tribes, evenly divided, camped around the entire thing. What was absolutely amazing about this particular part of history is that God made himself present in the real miracle and in the real ceremony. The miracle, you'll remember this, is that every night God would make, this is miraculous, every night there would be a pillar of fire. I I, I think that qualifies as a miracle. And, And every day there would be a cloud of covering the miraculous, the cloud and the flame that accompanied Israel every single day. And then, oh, the ceremony. Do some of you like ceremony? Some of you giant fans really like ceremony. You know, I mean, someone even came up to me and said, are you wearing orange in your tie for a reason? Does that have ceremony value today? And I have to simply say, no, I'm a Mariners fan. This is my grief color. Ceremony was very much a part of the daily expression of Israel. Throughout the day, when you read through all the sacrificial ceremonies, you recognize that God put sacrifice, ceremony, wedded uniquely to every episode of life. Was there birth? There'd be a sacrifice. Was there harvest? There'd be a sacrifice. Whatever was going on, there would always be ceremony, these two things, the miraculous and the ceremonial. You know what's absolutely amazing is that no matter how God good, how good God may be, sometimes we just don't get it. Have you ever noticed that about yourself? No matter how good God is, sometimes I simply miss it. I am in awe of how Israel missed it. Don't you ever just kind of read that story and say, how could they miss it? Pillar of fire at night, cloud of covering to the day. God knew that miracle and ceremony would not suffice. Years later, speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, God prophesied that there would be a sanctuary shift that would accomplish his purest goals. Jeremiah writes, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Listen to this. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. Just pause right there at verse 32. Do you see what God is saying? It's not going to be like the old days of the miracle and the ceremony. Church family, God is confessing that miracle and ceremony are not enough. Sometimes I say, Lord, if you could just, just display your right arm of miracle, mm. I'd be yours. Lord, if my broken, sin-filled heart could just be filled with the ceremony of your presence, if I could just somehow breathe in the incense of your presence, can't you really just imagine the entire camp of Israel just bathed in the incense of the ceremonial presence morning and evening but it wasn't enough not amazing the miracles the ceremonies not enough verse 33 this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time declares the Lord I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts and then God re-echoes this theme I will be their God and they will be my people. Do you know where the sanctuary is? (laughs) According to God, do you know where the sanctuary is? Did you just read it? Where is the sanctuary? It is in your heart, it is in our minds. 
It is the dwelling place of God so that he can declare without any hesitation, I am your God and you are my son. You are my daughter. Apart from miracle and apart from ceremony, it is based in relationship. Relationship. It is an amazing thing that God says, though I established a temple, a sanctuary, though I established a priesthood, and all of the services, all these things that were to point to me, none of the illustrations sufficed. The only thing that God says is going to really accomplish this would be the engagement of the mind and the heart. We as Seventh-day Adventists have sometimes struggled with how do we communicate what Jesus is doing in heaven right now. I would like to suggest to you that he answers that question in a bold, graphic way from the cross. Jesus hanging on the cross. It was to be the highest point of mockery that the priests had arranged that the one who would claim to be Messiah was going to be crucified, bracketed, surrounded by the lowest of the low. That he would now be hung publicly with thieves, with broken humanity. They thought this would be a mockery. Do you know what that is to God? That's ground zero for grace. I'd like to suggest to you that while Jesus was in the pain of all the sacrifice, all the hurt of humanity, that Jesus was not embarrassed. Come on, church, say amen. amen. You see, Jesus was not embarrassed of those thieves. And Jesus is not embarrassed of us. So, I, I revisited this passage and I started to take a look at this passage as it is, I believe, in its setting. Please recognize that Jesus was being crucified in the season of Passover. This was a sanctuary event. And I have to look at this passage through the eyes of sanctuary language. Sometimes we as Adventists, have you ever noticed that we as Adventists have, have opinions? I know this is a shock to some of you. I will say that most of the time in my theological training, when I came to this passage, this discussion about the thief and Jesus and the timing of the kingdom, the premise that the Adventist church has taken, and this is going to be just like so close to heresy, you may wonder. Most of us as Adventists have taken a look at that dialogue when Jesus says, you know, today I tell you you're going to be in my kingdom. We have wrestled with that on, I believe, our appropriate understanding of mortality and immortality. But church family, that is not what this is talking about. This is sanctuary story. This story is not talking about resurrection. This is talking about the dwelling place of God with humanity. Oh, this is so good. Because he is saying to your and my broken brother, though you have squandered to your life, I am telling you today. Yes. Come on, church. I am telling you today. You are in my kingdom because my kingdom dwells with you. Yes. I, Jesus says, I am here. My presence, Jesus, please make it clear to us. Your presence is not bound by my mortality. Jesus on the cross is not talking about the state of the dead. Jesus on the cross is talking about the state of the redeemed. I have brought sanctuary to you and I judge you mine 
And then, as if he is continuing a personal dialogue, one man to another, but it is not. It is God to the universes. Jesus cries out, not in fainting agony, but in victorious celebration. It is accomplished. And you know what the echo event, oh, you know this, you who have read the Bible, you have read the scripture, you know what happens when the God of the universe declares, I've accomplished it. You know what happens in the temple? It is so holy. It is so magnificent. This big curtain, 60 feet high, 20 feet wide. Some have said the thickness of a man's palm. Some have even said they had to weave two of them a year. And to test it, to see how strong it was, they would put teams of horses on either side to see if the teams of horses could tear it apart. Taking nearly 300 Levitical priests to wash the cloth. The miracle is that when Jesus said it's accomplished, when he said it is finished, when the dialogue is over, that now the dwelling place of God is with men, that that veil that had separated God from humanity is torn from the top to the bottom. And no longer, church, is there any separation between God and humanity. Let the church say so. Let the church live so. The Seventh-day Adventist church, I would like to suggest to you, was given an emphasis of sensitivity on the sanctuary message, not limiting it to a dialogue about prophecy days and hours. Please, church. But to declare that God was going to accomplish His will. The Protestant Reformation. Did you happen to any of you know that you sang a prof, you know, Protestant Reformation song when you opened up this morning? Did you notice that? You know, you know, yeah, a mighty fortress. This bulwark. What is this fortress? It is the dwelling place of God that is with man. I would like to suggest to you that the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Millerite movement specifically in the 1800s, was given a particular emphasis to wed with the Protestant Reformation. Understand, in the northeastern United States at this time, there is significant Reformation going along with the Baptists and with the Methodists. One of the most fundamental issues at that time was the tension with the Calvinist thought that suggested you're simply predestined to be saved or to be lost. And I know I'm overly simplifying it. But that was the great tension in the Protestant world at this time. And suddenly there was this holy rebirth that every human being empowered by the grace of God would be able to make choice. Even if you were a dying thief on the cross, you could make choice. You were given choice. I would like to suggest to you that at this time in world's history, the Seventh-day Adventist Church needs to stand up boldly and say that God stands in His sanctuary. Oh, where, where's His sanctuary? So church, this is the question to us, isn't it? Is God in His sanctuary in us? Can the world find, as the world is falling apart, as the world becomes more and more fragmented, as the world becomes less and less of a safe place, can the world find such a people who know the dwelling place of God so that as we move in and about the terrified amongst us, that we can move about as people secure, like Stephen, with the stones bouncing off of his body, about ready to die. And yet the book of Acts is so powerfully, powerfully clear because it describes that as, as Stephen is, is being stoned. It, it, it's absolutely amazing. Do you ever feel attacked in your life? You've got to pause here and ask you that question because you need to identify with this story. Do you ever feel attacked in your life? Come on, do any of you feel just kind of overwhelmed? Yes. There you go. Hmm. Stephen, 
full of the Holy Spirit, looked up into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and they yelled at the top of their voices. They wanted to, they wanted to drown out his testimony. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell on his knees and cried out. Oh, now here is the testimony of someone who dwells in the presence of God, church. You want to know if Jesus dwells in your heart? Hmm? I would like to suggest to you that it is when the character of Jesus Christ is fully pre reproduced in his people. Wow. Now let's go down through the list of what that character attribute might look like. No, let's not waste time on that. You have your list already. I'd like to share it with you from Scripture. The character of Jesus Christ fully reproduced in Stephen. Here it is, church. Because Jesus was his dwelling place, he was able to express the mind and the heart of his Lord. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Because the character of Jesus Christ had been fully reproduced in him. He was a forgiver. He was a lover. He was one who would extend the sanctuary of God to the people around him. When I read Scripture, I come to this closing passage. It's absolutely beautiful, and it's amazing how often you and I might just glide over it. Revelation chapter 21, it reads, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. <laughs> Listen to this, church. You know this, don't you? And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. And he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself shall be with them. And then if you drop down a little bit further, it simply makes this mysterious statement that there will no longer be a temple in that place. <laughs> Why? Scripture does not leave it unanswered. Because he is the temple. I would like to suggest to you at this time of world's history, God is hungry for a people who have discovered their dwelling place, who have discovered His dwelling place with them, who have found church sanctuary. Is that place where God pronounced to you clearly and fully, my will, my grace, has been accomplished in you. And so my response to him this morning is, Dear God, since you dwell with me and I with you, would you live it out with thee? This will be our response. This will be our benediction this morning. It is hymn number three something. 316. So open up your hymnals. The words will be in front of us. The deacons will receive your offering, but far more important that as we sing these words together, it is my prayer that we will accept the dwelling place, find ourselves at eternal home in the sanctuary that Jesus Christ has secured for each of us.
Church, may we go from this place blessed with the presence of God um, in your life and in your knowledge and in your memory. I pray that uh, you would find peace today. Uh, if you, anybody, as Pastor Keith was talking about just having that presence of God and knowing that assurance, having that peace of going through the day, if you felt like you used to have that and you are, it's kind of missing now, or if that's something you want, we'd love to pray with you afterwards. Uh, so please come forward and receive prayer. We'd be happy to pray with you after, after the service. So go forth and be blessed.